From the LiveX studios in New York City, Cheesehead TV brings you two guys who like to think they know something about football! Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Packer Transplants Live. I am Aaron Negler, and I am joined, as always, by my co-founder here at Cheesehead TV, Mr. Corey Banky. I'm coming to you live from the Cheesehead TV podcast studio in New York City. Corey joins us from Green Bay, Wisconsin, right across the street from Lambeau Field. And we are ready to talk some Packers. What do we have on tap today, Corey? Today, we catch up on everything I missed while I was busy in my garden. And we look ahead to the beginning of the Jordan Love era. But right now, we've got an off-season edition of the good, the bad, and the ugly. We got the good, we got. Turning the page from Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love. We got the bad. We got the leverage wars. They went on forever. I'm sick of it. We got the ugly. We got Aaron Rodgers in a Jets uniform. Are you kidding me? U-G-L-Y. It ain't got no alibi. It's ugly. Let's take a look. You know what else is? Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. So ugly. All right, Nicole, take it down. Take it down, Trevor. I don't need to see it. That's I don't enough. like it. Good lord, Corey Baker, uh, You know what else doing, is buddy? ugly? I uh, I opened What's a beer that? right before this show that I showed everybody. Literally opened it up as as the intro starting, and I spilled half of it. And yeah, I spent I the heard, entire intro. Yeah, I spent the entire intro cleaning up this beer. I I just put my 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 sweat rag. So I hope it doesn't get too hot up in this piece. Uh, is now covered in beer, so I'm going to suck that down. A second what a way to start it off, baby! We are back. Yeah. Packers I mean, transplants live, and we do mean live. I, I just it. saw I holy crap! It. Socials like going off. I didn't even get to that. I I definitely was carrying something, and then I dropped the G. <laughs> I dropped the G, <sighs> guys. The G, but the we're G. back. We're back, Corey Banky. How the hell was your off season, buddy? How you doing? It was good. It was good. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was good. You know, it's uh, we're in pre-camp. We still technically are. Tomorrow is uh, we are on the eve. We are in pre-camp eve right now, people. Starts feel tomorrow. It. I feel Can't it believe it. I'm so excited. You know, we we plan so for this excited. since plan for this since January, and it just comes upon you so fast. It's like summer gets here. You get all excited in Wisconsin, and then the season's starting. It's crazy. Uh, yesterday yeah, we, we had the and shareholders. Great. Yesterday we had a shareholders meeting, and it kind of felt like a game atmosphere around here. It was kind of cool. Um, nice. You know, people walking around had some traffic in Green Bay, which is a interesting, rare, unique site around here. <laughs> and um, yeah, you could. It's already full in gear. It's exciting. Got the new pro personnel uh, building uh, right over my shoulder. That is new this year. They're still getting it together uh, for the pro for the coaches and the players. They have a new place to park. You're seeing new videos of where the yeah, players are parking. Say, changes the whole background a lot for those of, social videos in the package. Yeah, a lot of lot of changes going on. Really exciting. Really exciting. Honestly, this is probably, you know, one of the most exciting uh, training camps in a long time, probably you know, twelve or thirteen or fourteen years. Couldn't agree I more. Can't count. Could can't not do agree math, more. But uh, but yeah, very ex- <laughs> very exciting. You know, a lot of people they just don't know. It's like that. It's almost like the pre-camp vibe where you're like, what I love so much about pre-camp is that you know you you don't know what the possibilities are they're endless they're virtually endless any player could eventually become you know the next Romeo Dobbs Christian Watson of that year um and you know you kind of get this vibe around the entire team right now what what's it going to be how's it going to gel what's going to happen you know and um meanwhile in New York uh, the most basic okay. shit is being shown all the time. Like literally, here's Aaron Rodgers throwing a pass to a receiver, and then they're going to show that like a million times. So dumb. Yeah, well, you know, I just can't wait right, for our right. camp to start. Yeah, here's the I, thing. Here's the thing. I, I can't wait You're for our camp Jets to start. Video. Yeah, it's like I don't. I don't need Jets. I, I'm literally going to block anybody that posts Jet stuff this year because you know that, that to me that's a. I think actually, I think that's the uh, what do they call that? Uh, a way to um, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna use I'm gonna use people posting Jets things. Like I, I'm just it's like okay, I get it when he was leaving and he got traded, but like the Aaron Rodgers bootlicker camp, like Ooh, bro, we know, we know. we deserved we yeah, deserved. We could the have a conversation we are, if you'd like. 
<laughs> we so deserved, as Packer fans, we deserved the right. season that we are embarking on two years ago. Let's not get it twisted. We all, That's the true. diehard fans out there, most of them, not saying people that thought differently were not diehard fans, not saying that, but there was a very, uh, very, uh, most most fans that I talked to have been ready for, for this chapter to begin. So we're two two years behind. Let's get this thing moving and and uh, let's that get is the playoffs. thing, though. It, it's like, you know, to I, me, that's the goal. Goal is getting the playoffs, look, by the way. Look, I understand why the move wasn't made when it was. Uh, we all wanted it. Packers weren't ready to do it. And I get it. And look, I think that will serve them well this year in particular because Jordan's had the amount of time he's had to sit. So I'm with you. I'm excited. I'm ready to embark. It's a whole new era. And that does make it exciting. And we'll talk about all this in, in a little bit. We got some. We got some stuff to get to, but first, Corey, before we go any further, it is it is time. It's time. It's our first hotness of the year. Let's get to oh, it. Oh, snap. Baby, baby, been waiting to hear that. Love it. It's been a while. God, that's just awesome. It's I don't even know what the hotness awesome. is. I just see the hotness, so I'm ready for this. You, you, I'm ready for this. That would that would that would require. Oh, I read, read the script. The script. And I read the script. It's not the hotness is not in the script. Just the cue of the video, and I don't have that playing right now. Okay, let's see. I'm excited. Uh, there are two. There are what two are things. Doing? There are two things. They just have their own cues. That's why you don't think they're the hotness, but they are. Uh, first up, the new video yeah. boards in Lambo. It has been time it has long been time look at that thing that is like a star destroyer of a video board it is beyond time for new video boards in lambo field i am beyond excited i i'm sorry we don't have video of the video boards in action but we have <laughs> new video boards in lambo field that ladies and gentlemen is fucking hot i it, i it can't is. tell you i never really understood how behind lambo was in this regard until I got on the beat and I traveled to all these other stadiums and I was like, oh, oh, we're like, you know, when you used to go to your grandma's house and grandma's television was inevitably a lot less than what you had at home. It's like, yeah, watching highlights in Lambo is like being at grandma's house. It was like, grandma, can we buy you a new TV? No, I like this one. So it's like no longer is Lambo grandma's house now. Now it's a modern house. And I'm, I'm yeah, down. I do I'm think really, they, uh, really you know, excited. if I if I have. If I have one nit to pick with the boards, they're a little bit too wide than tall. So they should have, in my opinion, they should have made them a should've little bit higher, taller because right. most of your content sixty nine. 69. So now they're going to have to repurpose. And, like, it's kind of like, guys, couldn't you just pay a little bit more for a little bit taller boards, you know? I, mean, I think what we, they were doing is they're so afraid of us outside watching. Yes. Yeah, well, I think I'll they're kind of afraid of like, exactly. oh, because honestly, if you go over, um, if you or go you start to, flying your drone, you're gonna have a free view of everything. You know, they don't. You want can't that. fly your drone. It's illegal. That's illegal, by the way. You can't do that. They'll come. the The black suits will come. Um, so here's <laughs> the thing: if you go to Oneida and um, mm -hmm. if you go to Oneida and Lombardi, right from there, right. you can actually like you could watch the game at Lambeau Field. It's really cool. Like you could watch whatever's on the screen. So I wonder if they did it because of that. You know, I love it. Well, regardless, it's hot. Uh, the other hotness, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We're partnered with the folks over at the official, and I underline official, yearbook of the Green Bay Packers. That's right. Go to PackersYearbook.com. Use promo code CHTV for 10% off, and you too can enjoy the writing of one Wes Hotkowitz, among others. But let me tell you, Wes is an absolute demon for this thing. He is amazing. The, the content he provides for this piece, this yearbook, is incredible. We are proud to partner with them. Go to PackersYearbook.com, promo code CHTV for 10% off. Do it. That's hot. Ladies and gentlemen, let, let me let me just show you. Like, I've got my copy. Look, look, look at that. Rise and That's shine. Nice. Jordan Love, baby. Let's go. I'm, I'm telling you, this thing is amazing. You want your copy, folks. Get ready for a new era. Um, all right. 
All right. You ready, Corey? You ready for some Packers news? Because there is a bunch. Yeah. There is a bunch of Packers news. Some yeah. of it is Bring it to camp me. specific. Some of it is like organizational, but it's all got to be talked about. Um, first up, uh, kind of probably the headliner going into camp, uh, Rashawn Gary and Eric Stokes start the camp on PUP. I, I don't think anybody's should well, be Rashawn surprised. Gary's coming that. back, and he's coming back like in a week. Like he's go, he's supposed to be in in camp. Well, okay, I just okay. read that somewhere. All right, all right, relax, relax. Not a week. It won't be a week. Uh, which is the next note? Stokes and Gary on track to return during Let camp. Oh yeah, during camp. That's what I saw. That's what I saw. During See, camp. I knew that news. I knew. I was so excited yeah. when it said Rashawn Gary's going to return for camp. Well, camp's tomorrow, bro. I hate to yes. tell you. And, and they, I know will be. I know. I know the. I know the. I know the. His eminence, oh, Aaron Nagler, won't be here tomorrow for the start of camp. But guess who will be? This guy right here. Let's go. Anybody says I'm not. Oh, wait. I'm not on wait. it. Wait. What? Okay. First of all, are you reading the chat? Don't read the chat. A second I'm not of all, reading the chat. I'm not really going to go to make that up. I'm literally watching you. Are you going to go? Okay. Are you going to yeah. go to practice? I go. You know how I go to practice? I go out this door right here. <laughs> I sit, and I can literally see the kids on their bikes. I can chill, and I can have a beer, and I can be so, like, ah, oh, that kid so, got that. And I can have my binoculars. I'm at camp, so bro. Okay. Right. I'm at camp. So that's I don't know. What you, I, You're well, at camp. I'm more at camp than You're you are, bro. You're not going to practice. I'm more at camp than you are. I'm more at camp than you are, bro. Calmer than you are, bro. Um, I will say I talked about this on daily a little bit. It is I am definitely having a little FOMO. There is zero doubt. Like I haven't I've been at the first day of camp for like ten years basically, and it's been a long time. But look, there's, there's no pads. There's no like they're in shorts and t-shirts for the first like four or five practices. Like it's just I want to be there. Here's the other thing. So if I get there early. I can't be gone forever, so then I got to leave. And then, like, the joint practices happen, and I don't want to miss those. That's the most exciting part of camp. So I'll be there. Don't you worry. I'll Sounds be, like I'll a you problem. In good All times. these things sound like a you problem, not a Packers problem. Yeah, no, they, they sound like a uh, very much a me me problem. The other problem is uh, dudes getting hurt after the offseason program all on their own, uh, including Tariq Carpenter and Traverius Moore, who – earlier today were placed on the non-football injury list. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. Dude, to weren't even playing even, I football. Don't, I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what we're talking about, though. I, I know. Tariq Carpenter is a second-year player who was making this is making the switch from safety to linebacker. Uh, Tavarius Moore is a free agent edition safety that they signed from the San Francisco 49ers. Not that you would know anything about that. Uh, speaking Thanks, of signings. I still don't care. I still don't care. But, yes, but, I'm yeah. aware. I'm aware. Uh, yeah. But speaking of signings, the Packers did sign an MVP, the USFL MVP, Alex Magoo. Alex Magoo, uh, who, okay, can I just say this right here? Because this is probably. He's a quarterback, I mean, right? I, oh, that's a quarterback, He right? is a quarterback. He's a quarterback. Yeah, that's sweet. And I think he'll he'll probably have a nice camp, and it'll be a fun story or whatever. But can I just say, the amount of fucking people who instantly, because he played well in the USFL, are like, oh, could he challenge Jordan Love? All right, uh, all y'all, just erase your internet. Just, like, uh, delete your presence online. Because, no. Just I no. mean, I mean, technically. Like, like, Corey, like te don't do it. technically. Don't, technically. Don't, do it, don't encourage these people. Technically. Don't do it. Every person who is on the roster as a quarterback is challenging Jordan Love for the top spot. But realistically, he, they're challenging for number two. I get it. Moving on. Uh, Josh I mean, Sitton and Jordan I mean, what, Nelson what, here, will be inducted into the what, what, Hall of Fame. I mean, here's the thing. What happens when, you know, they're like, oh, we love Jordan Love those first two games. I mean, I know Coach is going to play him the entire time. Like, Are they going to take Jordan Love out to see any other quarterbacks? Yeah, of course. Of okay, so what about happens about in the third yeah. quarter when Alex Mago? You say Mago, Magoo, McGillicuddy? Magoo. When Magoo. Alex Magoo, oh when uh, <laughs> when Alex Magoo, when he throws <laughs> three Hail Marys at the end of the game to win right. the game, and, right. and all of the state of Wisconsin is clamoring for him to start, 
what are they going to do then? I don't think Mark Merritt. Dude, I don't they think all Mark wanted Murphy Kurt has Banker to stick around. They all wanted like you know that happens Dude, every Kurt, year. Kurt that Banker screwed matter. himself. Kurt Banker screwed. Kurt, Kurt Banker uh, dug his own grave with the Packers, in my opinion. That's an he got too uh, big. He got too yeah. big for his britches, and you can kind of see it happening now on social all the time. He got a little too big for his britches. He didn't no, ask permission okay. on some no, stuff. I, I don't real. think that's the case. They don't like I, fan I think, favorites around here. Come on. That's now. Now you're closer. I think he had a good connection with fans, and he was very good at using social media. And the Packers don't like that. There's zero doubt about that. Like there, I'm with oh, you. No. But like. I don't think he got too big for his britches. I just think he's really good on social media. That's uh, I think he did there. some things on social media he didn't ask about. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. Big anyway, big like. next up, we got Josh Sitton and Jordy Nelson being inducted to the Packers Hall of Fame, which is not really news, but I love that Tyler Herrick, our social person, put it out there like it was news during the shareholders <laughs> meeting, and kind of everyone just ran with it. God bless. That's the power of Tyler, by the way. That is the power o Tyler. Um, it was funny because like he tweeted it out and I was like, uh, I think that's been out there because like I kept waiting for he, they announced it. And I was like, uh, didn't they announce this? And then I searched my Google and it was like, yeah, there's the email from the Packers like announcing it like last year, whatever. Uh, but it was fun to watch how much Tyler can drive social conversation. God bless him. I love it. Uh, speaking of social conversation, you know, complex, Corey. You you don't know complex. Um, no the one magazine? knows complex. I, I guess I don't know. Yeah, Is was it? it wasn't it a magazine and now it's a social? Are magazines right? still existing? Is that a thing now? Yeah. Well, Sports whatever. Sports Illustrated it is. still what tweets, the... bro. Yeah, I guess sure. Like it's still tweet, the Sports Illustrated oh, still sorry. a thing. Wait, they're not tweets anymore. They're like X's, aren't they? X's. They anyway, still X. Whatever. They, they still are. X it out. Um. So complex ranked. All 32 teams, and this is important to know, Corey. There are 32 teams in the NFL. Complex ranked the Packers Twitter account at 32. 32. There are only 32 teams. I'm actually actually surprised they got 32, to be honest with you. (laughs) They could, I mean, they should have been sub 32, is what they should have been. They could have not been on the list, and they could have been like, yeah. There's no honorable mentions. We're just only going to rank people who actually are good what, at all. What's really sad is they fell from like 20, well, they were like 22nd or 24th last year, all the way down to 32nd. That's how bad I mean, it they've was. done less. To be honest, they've done less. Title Town, Title Town, the, the Title Town account does more social than the Packers account. It's kind of crazy. I don't think you're wrong. Now, it's here's the thing. Crazy. Look, before we move on, can I just say, stop people online attacking the handle of the Packers. Like the people running the Packers Twitter account are creative as hell. Really great. Yeah. It's not their fault. No, it's not on them. They have edicts from on high. Now where the conversation in the, in some later date, we'll get into this where the controversy gets where, how high does it go? That's the question. But trust me, the people tweeting and responding to tweets and putting stuff out there, the people David Bakhtiari are attacking, it's not on them. It ain't their fault. That's all you need to do. It's, it's my fault. It's my fault. Essentially. Essentially. Uh, the Packers, by the way, Corey, shareholders meeting happened Monday, as you, as you intimated. Um, the Packers have reported revenue of $610 million. Now, it's as you'll low. see from this, it's a little low. Andy chart. Look at this. Look at this growth. Look at the growth from the national revenue. I mean, folks, I get local revenue didn't really uh, didn't really skyrocket. But look, and most I would suspect most of that's because no playoff game. But look, look at that national revenue. And here's the thing: the real bump from the huge media deals that they signed a couple years ago is set to hit next year. Like that chart, that, that last, last bit. You know what's on, really on crazy? Right, that's going to go way up. That's what's nuts. What The one on the right, really what do you crazy. mean? You mean the national revenue? The national one. revenue from 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. The national you know what's revenue. really crazy that's about to is that skyrocket. You know what's really crazy is that 
309 million in 2020 inflation numbers I think is more than 347 million in 2021 inflation depending on how you do the math so that's interesting but but also 209 there. million dollars in 2014 is a lot of money compared to yes yeah, sir. it's all a lot of money but uh yeah uh <laughs> even though their revenue was that wasn't their revenue their profit was down not their revenue was down sorry profit one was thing down, one yeah, number was sure. down yeah yeah because they had to buy but cheese like, head was, you know they had to buy formation so that that took their budget formation they bought formation they most certainly did uh but more importantly I, I love this i this is so unique the idea that they have as we all know as you live right across from it uh title town tech is an ongoing concern for the Packers. Uh, they have partnered with Microsoft and raised, uh, along with a few others, uh, $70 million in their second fund to bring their assets under management up to $95 million. Uh, close to handling, basically, $100 million in this tech fund. I mean, that's pretty damn impressive for this mom and pop smallest market in the league by the way oh we 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 got stuff to throw around when it comes to like helping startups and building businesses in green bay wisconsin that's amazing to be fair to be fair it's national it's not just green bay and they're trying to do more midwest but it's not you don't there's no prerequisite they actually have a lot of they have a lot of companies that are headquartered in places other thing i want to say about that is the first fund i believe had a lot more money from the packers and microsoft than than investors but the second fund had more way more money from investors and now they're well on the way into the third fund which they haven't actually talked about right. and the third yep. fund is projected to be a lot more than even the in the second round so you know it's not done because you know if you're in the vc space you understand oh, 95 right. million dollars sounds like a lot of money but you know if you're trying to make unicorns it's not it's not a cra- it's 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 incredible that the Packers are able to do this in mid in the Midwest and already be one of the largest VCs headquartered in the Midwest, which is pretty incredible. But um, they got a long way to go. They got they you know I think their goal you know ultimately is you know half a half a bill half a bill, as it should be. So yeah, keep but going. By the way, also uh, are are the New York Giants doing this? Are are the San Francisco Forty ers in near Silicon Valley doing this? You know what I mean? Like the fact that they're doing this. In Green Bay, Wisconsin, it's fucking awesome. I love. Well, it. I'll tell you what. You know what? Every all thirty-one teams are going to do it as soon as uh, one company has a uh, has a, a launch of a, a public a success uh, story IPO, right. and the Packers yep. get two hundred million dollars off of a two million dollar <laughs> investment. That's where it's going to be like, oh, okay, that'll work. To do this. I would be surprised uh, though. I have out. a feeling that there are incubators from some of the other teams, though. I have a feeling that there's some. You know, there know, are there are a handful. There are a handful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're not like Title Town, but they they do have some incubation and some investment. Now we're going to talk some football, people. I'm not looking at the chat, but I got to think there's a, probably one lone dude like uh, like really mad that we're not talking about football. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to talk about some offense, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first up, because you know where it starts, Corey, the offensive line. The offensive line should be a strength this year. We all remember going into Minnesota week one last year. With the Jake Hansons of the world, no, no, no shade to Jake Hanson, but you're, you're not a frontline starter in the NFL. You're a depth piece. We, we love to have you as depth. But the fact that David Bakhtiari and Elton Jenkins should hopefully knock on wood, be ready and able to go week one for the Green Bay Packers is exponentially more important than almost anything else other than Jordan Love's development. The fact that they will be a strength for this team gives Jordan not only a fighting chance, but the Packers the ability to operate on offense. How many times have you seen teams, Brian kind of touched on this uh, during his presser today, but teams where like, we're trying to evaluate guys, say in the second half of a preseason game, and nothing, you can't do anything because you can't block anybody because you can't like hold the ball for more than three seconds before there's a defensive end in your face. You know, So the fact that this offensive line should be a strength is it, it just starts Jordan Love's career as a starter on the perfect note. I love it. I love that they've got – and I know there were so many people out there, at least online, oh, they should trade David Bakhtiari as a like a, a combo package with Aaron Rodgers. Are you insane? There's a no. – going to be a Hall of Famer. You don't just get rid of him like that. No, no. 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 
I love it. No. I love that he's here. I love that Elton's here. We need Josh Myers to step up a little bit, but the, the offensive line as a whole should be a strength. And I love I it. I mean, what they need to do is they need to go out there and free agency and get themselves a center. Uh, don't get me started. You mean like the Chargers did in Corey Lindsley? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Chargers. How'd that go? Pretty well, I think. I don't know. They just signed their quarterback to a billion-dollar deal, though. Holy cow. Shout out. I just think it's – Shout out, you know, Justin Herbert. It's always that one missing link, you know, and the missing Ooh. link is not the quarterback in the last three years. I feel you. I feel you. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it's, this, the, the key part of this graphic is sh- the word should because nobody yes, dashes – correct. Nobody, nobody dashes hopes. You know, it used to be the number one dasher of hopes was Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. And now the new dasher of hopes is the Packers offensive line. Because it, it should just, be a strength, Corey. It should be I want to have faith. I want to have faith. It should. The, the, the should is doing a lot of work in that sentence is all I'm saying. Correct. Correct. Well, you know why? Because hmm. we're on the eve of camp. A lot of ball game left. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, um, also on offense, they have currently, <laughs> I love this fact, Three wide receivers who have played more than one snap in an NFL game. Awesome. That's kind of amazing to me. I love that. I love the idea that this group is going to grow together. Like, it is insanely young. Like, complete outlier to how most NFL teams build their rosters. And I love it. I love it. I love the fact that these guys, yes, will make mistakes. There will undoubtedly be communication errors, what have you. But, man, the upside here, the ability to grow, the ability for this team to grow together, I'm so excited. I can't, Corey, I can't contain my excitement when it comes to this wide receiving group and what is possible. There's so much talent. It's all untapped. It's all unproven. I can't wait for them to prove it. I'm all in. Can't wait. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, what's funny is if you put, Offensive line have played more than one. Three offensive linemen have played more than one snap. You'd be a little bit. You'd have a heart attack right now. <laughs> now that um, now they're but yeah, that'd be a little wide receivers. Little it's concerning. exciting. Wide receivers. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. It really totally is, especially agree. given especially. Well, I think what's exciting about it is given the level of play by those wide receivers we're talking about, especially two of them. Um, you know, there's a lot of a yep. lot of juice, a lot of upside, a lot of uh, talent that even an idiot like me can see is real. <laughs> I'm down with it. Um, hey, you know what could happen? Now we we're talking about coulds, shoulds, what have yous. You know what could happen? The Packers could finally lean on their running backs. I know. I know it's crazy. I know it's Good insane. I know they got a former first round pick at quarterback. I know they got all this talent at wide receiver. I mean, they've got an offensive line. I, I'm just positing a theory here. The Packers could finally lean on their running. I thought they were going to do it last year. I thought that was blazingly obvious that it needed to happen. Apparently, people inside 1265 Lombardi and their infinite wisdom disagreed. But I will say, fine, the Packers could finally finally lean on their running backs. Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, and company could really have a banner year this year. I really hope it happens because they got the talent. They got the talent. They got the tools. They got the talent. It's Miller time. I just, I don't see it. I don't, I just don't see it. I, I think we're gonna you think that funny, they're going to think they're going to, and I just don't funny, think are going to. I agree. That's why I say could. You know, <laughs> like you talk about should in the last graphic doing all that work. Could absolutely doing all the work here because like, I'm with you. I, I don't expect it to happen, but they could. It AJ could Dillon. I love AJ Dillon as a person, as a man, as a player. He's a beast. And I still feel like Matt, it's like AJ Dillon was just dumped on him by Brian. It just feels that way. It, it <laughs> just feel feels that I way. Totally feel you. I, I, I agree. I agree. You know, and it, like we used to be able to blame I, I QB1, you. and now we have no one to blame because, like, even Mark said <laughs> it in the shareholder meeting. Mark right. Mark said it himself in the shareholder meeting. I can't remember the exact quote, but he did say something no. about that on how Aaron has had a little bit more leeway. It was interesting because yeah. he kind of well, let that out of the it bag was a interesting. little bit. And he also said, though, which is, I, I find this fascinating because he does, 
we, <laughs> look, he's like the Mark, grandpa. He's like the uncle who like told, says all the shit. Uncle. Like, oh yeah, he's well uncle, you know my co- like yeah you know yes. my cousin's gay, and then everybody's like, uncle, no, no, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't come out yet. And like he's that guy. He's like, he says the shit, oh, and you're just like, yeah, that's what God. I thought. That's what I thought, Mark. <laughs> Thanks. That's exactly what I thought Thanks. was happening. Thanks, Thanks for, for validating. That. Thanks for validating he was my the- fandom. The introductory press conference for Matt when he was like, I gave him some bullshit. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like it's not supposed we to use that all the bullshit. time. We use that as a meme that is all the time. such a yeah. great. But that is such a great window into Mark Murphy. It's because it's so true. Like, I gave him some bullshit. It's like, yeah, well, you can course. tell. You can tell. Bullshit. OK, case in point, though. Case in point. Like, OK, I give uh, Packers marketing all kinds of hard times for Packers everywhere because right, right. they'll have Mark. So Mark shows up in London and everybody's oh, drunk in London yes. at a bar. And Mark's having a good like, time. Right? Mark's like. Let me tell you the history of how we got to London, and you're just like, bro, just say, just, ah. just say, hey, we're gonna have an awesome game. We're gonna kick the Giants' ass. Okay, go Packers! Yeah, Yay! Everybody loves you. Shut exactly. the fuck up, <laughs> dude. He's that's like, it. well, then that I was it. thinking about this, and then I was, I <laughs> got, and then I was in the NFL meeting, and oh, God. My, dude, my I'm, I'm asleep, Mark. I'm asleep, bro. But he did. He did drop some nuggets, though, in that presser, though. He or not in the presser, in the he main did. thing where he talked about in the, in the Aaron yeah, had a little bit more that. leeway, and so there should yep. be more running game because of that. It was something like that. Did I did I decipher that well? You might have the exact quote. I don't have the exact quote. No, no. But well, he talked about what was interesting to me is what he expects to happen this year in regards to like it's so funny because Matt a hundred billion percent always kind of deflects. Anytime it gets brought up, like, oh, we're going to see Matt's offense. Oh, Matt can finally run his offense. And Matt, oh, he did it today. Like, no, nah, well, he always deflects, whatever. But I, he knows what that means. And, and Mark intimated that, oh, I think we'll see a little more, you know, a bit more leaning on the running game. And off of that, more play action, which, by the way, makes all the sense in the world. I don't think that's telling tales out of school. I don't think he's no. revealing any secrets. But I don't, but I don't think like, he's right, though. And, this and is Matt, Matt dumped that. Matt right. dumped on that idea. Right. That's what's crazy. That's what, that's, and that's what goes back to we, we should lean more on the running game. But if you listen to Matt yesterday, it yep. didn't sound like we're leaning on the running game to me. Oh, well, okay. He's not going to say shit out of the gate. You know that. Like They're going to like – let camp play out. We'll get to the preseason and they'll have all sorts of plays where it's like, oh, what does this mean for the season? It doesn't mean anything. Nothing we see for the next no. month means anything when it comes to game planning for specific opponents and specific schemes on defense, blah, 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 blah. But I did love that Mark, like, straight up was like, yeah, I think we'll see a little bit more of Matt's offense. It's like your coach has literally been trying to beat that back all offseason. And you're just out here going, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. You, Every fan out there, you're right. Don't worry about it. You're right. Well, and and you know, I I know we call him the drunk uncle, but I do think he's kind of learned over time that he can be misdirection man and it pay off. And if there's no dude, there's no there's no penalty for it besides us talking about it. He you know knows what, I mean? Which is what he's literally doing. Nothing. Yeah, 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 he knows what he's it's doing. It's literally Zero misdirection. Doubt. It's just misdirection. Zero doubt. Look at his interview at the WIAA girls uh, tournament. Like when the whole Rogers thing was still up in the air, he knew he exactly what he was doing, and he was right. By the way, yep, he only told the truth. You know, he so, took the narrative you know. back by doing that. Yes. Right? It's like he one he basically percent. was like, "This is not a narrative that one person should it's, have." When we're in it's the Don Draper, right? Doing this. You don't like what they're saying? Change the conversation. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Um. All right. Uh, let's talk about the defense, Corey. Your favorite subject. Let's go. Oh, wait, your favorite subject's coming up. But right now we're going to talk about the defense and the fact that <sighs> fool me once, Joe Barry. <laughs> You've had your once. You've had your once. I was so excited after that 49ers playoff game. I cannot begin to tell you. And then you get into the training camp, right? Last summer where they're like so physical up front. And they're really causing the Packers problems on offense. And you're just like, oh, that's a continuation of what we saw in that playoff game. Here we go. We're ready to dominate. We're ready to be physical. We're ready to dictate 
And then we get to week one in Minnesota, and it's all in garbage. And I hear every excuse maker out there, well, uh, well, if you take away four plays, those four plays happened. Where our fucking <laughs> secondary looked like they were in a clown car. I'm done. I'm done with the excuses. I'm done. I want a high level defense. I don't people talk about rankings and like top five or whatever, top ten, no. whatever. I don't care about the rankings. Top 15. I don't care about rankings. I no, want but a good here's, defense. I understand. I want a here's defense the thing that about, I'm not like here, embarrassed by every other week. Here's That's the thing about the Green here's the thing about the Green Bay Packers defense since the nineteen ninety four. Three, let's call it. Since 1993, when the Green Bay Packers defense is in the top 15, good things happen. Right. So that's all we need. Top 15, and then there's one I other stat it. I really like. Uh, there's another stat that always gets a team in the playoffs and usually gets the I love further. that you just called good things happen a stat. That's good. I like it. I didn't call anything a stat. I you never said, said stat. One other stat. What was the other stat? You just said one other stat I like. What? Was oh, right. So I inferred. Said, I inferred that I that got you. I got, I got. Okay. Okay. Words matter. Words matter. I'm. I've been <laughs> immunized. Um. Okay. So, um, one other stat. One other stat is that I like. One other stat that I like is when a team has defensive turnovers. That that usually gets a team really. St. St. Louis Rams back in the day. Uh, they had a really sure. high turnover rate, the greatest show you, on turf. You know, and Packers, it, hey. Packers 2010 had a really high turnover rate. We when we have a good turnover rate on the defense, Tom Capers good crew, things they always they always brought the turnovers. I hear you. And Dom, a good a high turnover, turnover rate can can get you further ahead. Like you can have all other shitty stats, but you can still be really awesome. But um, here's the thing that I want. I, I want this for Amar really badly. One of our fans on Cheesehead TV. Oh, dude, um, right. Right. I want Joe Barry. I want Joe Barry. I want the Packers to play lights out with Joe Barry this year because I want I want Amar to just I want him to have to eat shit. I want him. I just I don't know no, why. I, okay, I, all right. I don't that's, want him to eat shit, but I want it. him. I okay, that was a little harsh. I love Amar. I love Amar, but I do I do want him to. I just want him to have to say Joe Barry's He's good because constant, I know how I much say, that's gonna pain him if he, he has to do it. <laughs> in his Joe Barry hate, there is zero doubt. Yeah, if, like you and I, we went to acting school. The idea of a character's spine, right? Like everything hangs off of this. That for Amar is hating Joe Barry. There is zero yeah. doubt. So I mean, I I'm sure you, he's not live right like now, and happen. I didn't. I didn't mean eat shit, but I don't want him to eat shit. But yeah, close to that, as close to eating shit as possible without actually. <laughs> I want him. A uh, mea culpa. That would be great. A little like, okay, Joe did it. Hey, but look, I think Amar is representative of a boatload oh, yeah. of Packers fans oh, yeah. who feel the same way. So oh, yeah. I understand. You know more what I mean? People, like, more people hate Joe Barry as Packer fans. Like, I okay, so if the vote was, if the poll was, do you hate Joe Barry? Do you love Joe Barry? Do oh, you dude, like on. Joe Barry or do you dislike <laughs> Joe Barry? I'm pretty right. sure that like 80% would be hate. Yeah. And 20% oh, yeah. would be dislike. And 0.1% would be like. That might be low. Like. That might be low. <laughs> I, I feel you. I feel you. Which, by the way, speaking of Joe Barry, shout out to Joe for going to Lake Tahoe with uh, family and friends and recording a TikTok, which I did not pull for this program. Uh, Though I did want to, but I thought, like, let the man live. I only know about this, by the way, because someone tagged me in the comments of the TikTok and was like, what is, is this Joe Barry? Shouldn't he be fixing our defense or some nonsense like that? Oh, I'm wait, like, I, Joe Barry has a TikTok? No, well, I think oh, it was his. I need to some, follow this. What, either his kid or one of their friend's kids had posted. It, it was it. like, you know, the parents and the kids doing an ABBA song. It was a joke about how the dude, oh, the cool. dads had made all the money and they were all out having a great time at Lake Tahoe, blah, 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 blah. It was a fun TikTok with their families. It's like everyone in the NFL at this point was on vacation. Literally yeah. every human in the league. And this dude is also, like, shouldn't he be fixing our defense? It's like, no, he's on vacation. Let the man live. Also, everybody gets a vacation in this world. Everybody should. Even, even. Not rich know. people, but you would know. not the. I, th I wish the one. Yeah, it's like if the one percent just gave, if the point one percent just gave away their vacation to everybody else, then everybody could have like twenty days. So there you go. 
no, Next no, no. up. Sorry. Bring it back to Sorry. football. <laughs> bring it back to football. Oh, Amar's here, by the way. Uh, oh, he is? Question. Did he hear what I said? The question. Wait, he, 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 yeah, he, he just got here. He just, told him. He, he's a carry the G Club member. You best believe he's here. Um, oh. All right. Yeah, uh, next up. Questions. The questions abound on this defense at defensive line, edge, and safety. Look, the safety thing is like off the chain. Like the fact that Darnell Savage is your leader in the yeah, clubhouse no, at the safety position. Yep. Yikes. I mean, no one is under more pressure than Darnell Savage entering this season. Zero humans. I mean, I understand the Jordan Love co- component, but like he's going to have a long leash, right? Darnell Savage has got to work. He's got to make it happen. There is zero. Okay, let, let, let's be on. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to. It's pre camp. Okay, and I feel a little jaded pretty, in the show. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know where my optimism went. It went out the door, I think, as soon as I spilled my beer. But let's be real for one <laughs> second about Darnell Savage, okay? Right. What what Packer fans, what do you think the over or the under is on Darnell Savage having a good year? I feel like you're going to take the under on this all day. I just feel like the <sighs> likelihood most, of this happening yeah, based on no. what we saw last year is low, very low. It's hard. Look, I, hate I to thought say he that. played I hate to say better that. after he got demoted twice. Here's the thing. People talk about him being, quote, benched, right? And, yeah, to an extent that's true. But he got demoted twice. He went from, like, a regular part of, the like, the starting group to, oh, we're just going to play you in the nickel to, oh, we're just going to play you in the dime to, like, uh, we're like really going to actively try to keep you off the field. Like, that is just a bad look for a firmer, former first-round pick. I'm rooting for Darnell. I don't understand why Brian picked up his fifth-year option last year. I don't understand why it took so long for them to make he the had adjustments no options. they did last year. No options. Well, no, I'm talking about, yeah. I mean, but yeah, we could. Well, that's what yeah, I mean. Anyway. He picked up his fifth-year option because he has no other options. No, Amos is going to go somewhere else. What has he got? So, got a whole like, lot of nothing. I just, whole lot I just want chamber. this kid to to – produce in this system because it's very clear he was on an ascension he was doing well in Petten's system as soon as joe got to town it all just i mean i'm not even talking about like it took a slight dip it disappeared you know oh so we're blaming this on joe barry too i don't know about joe barry but the system doesn't suit his strengths i mean i think that's pretty clear i don't think that's Mm. i don't think that's wild to say i mean the numbers are there and it's not just one year Multiple so years. So basically, you know? Simone Biles' husband is going to be our answer. All right. I've I've been saying all offseason I like Jonathan Owens. I think he is a great addition, and I love his trajectory as a player from a guy who was, you know, special teams, just kind of getting spot duty to, okay, now where he's in the mix regularly to a starter. And I get he wasn't, like, the greatest player last year, but he's continuing to ascend. And I think that was smart on the Packers' part to pick him up. Um, finally, eight first round picks. This comes back, and I understand what Joe said at his presser this offseason when this was, you know, discussed and or posited. Eight like there's always pressure in the NFL. You always under the microscope. You always have to deliver. I get all that, Joe, but goddamn, man. Eight first round picks on defense. And I get it, man. Not all of them are like living up to those expectations. Not only eight yeah. first round picks. Most of those first Holy round picks, Toledo. by the way, were taken after 15. So let's be real. Sure. Fine. Uh, well, and the know, drop off, the talent, drop, the, it's the Mariana's fucking trench after 15 though. Let's be real. Okay. More, sometimes. Um, it depends on the year. Sometimes. Yeah, I, hear I, hear I hear you. There is a point in the first round of every year where it's literally like, here are the good players that are like, okay, they're going to, you know. I mean, look, A.J. Hawk was taken in the seventh round. He didn't even do seventh round numbers, bro. Let's be real. Dude, dude. No, no. You, you, you're thinking. No, dude. dude. Seventh round. Dude, Anybody. A.J. Hawk was taken in the first round. AJ no, Hawk but he was taken first, seventh. That's, that's what, seventh. Sorry. Seventh yeah. in the first round. There that's you. what I meant. I said there seven. There I said you. seven. I didn't mean the seventh round. I, but, but, yeah, he was taken right. number numero seven, and he it was not good. He was okay. He was probably he about was, as good as Blake Martinez, who was taking the fourth round. So there you go. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was. Yeah he was, he was, yeah, he was as good as a player taking the fourth meet, round. Exactly. He did not meet expectations. Exactly. I mean, he no did better than Tony Mandridge. Um, Other than that, you know. 
That's true. That's fair. That's fair. Um, finally, now it is your favorite. He subject. did better than Special Justin team. Harrell, too, to be honest with you. He did better than Justin Harrell. He did. No doubt. Sorry. Uh, real I'm quick, we got to get to uh, we got to get to we fence. We got to get to special teams, Corey. It's your favorite part of the part of the is operation he, here. Is is AJ Hawk one of the is he is he in the top ten worst first round draft picks? He's in the top ten. I feel like <sighs> this, is, this history, is a good one for no. watch party. I'm gonna I'm gonna figure this out for next watch party. Yeah, Packers history. Uh, on Packers history, that's my question here. Like NFL history, yeah, Packers, no. Packers, uh, Packers draft history? history. Is he one of the? Is Possibly. he in the top ten of all time worst first rounders Wait. taken in the first round? So you mean like most disappointing? Like most yeah. didn't lead? Yeah, people who didn't live up to their expectations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe, maybe. I guess it depends on who you ask. I wouldn't put him there, but I know lots of Packer fans probably would. Oh, yeah. Hawk was number um, five. Thank you, Joe Mailman. Thank you. He was number five, not number you. seven. My bad. Number five, even, even more disappointing. Even more disappointing. Um, so, Corey, they drafted a kicker. I know you were not here <sighs> on Cheesehead TV live while we did our three-day <sighs> marathon coverage of the draft. So I need your albeit belated response. I know you were undoubtedly following along and knowing what was going on on Twitter or what have you while you were other places during the draft. How did you feel when you learned you historically famously hating the idea of using a draft pick on a kicker? How'd you feel about that? Not good. Didn't feel good about it. <laughs> Going to be honest with you. Okay. I, uh, you know, look at the end of the day, Brian knows a lot more than me. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm real with that. I've been real with that for a long That's time. Fair. You know? That's fair. And uh, I have faith in Brian. Uh, I don't have any faith in Mark. I got a little bit of faith in Matt, but I got faith in Brian. Of the triangle, I think, uh, you know, the spear of the triangle. Yeah, of the triangle? Brian. Brian's? Oh, interesting. That's interesting. All right. The biggest issue is still I should have I should have saved my little thing about the triangle. The biggest problem in the triangle is, yeah. and we have yet to see that nobody's really talking about is, you know, Brian and Matt. You know, the connection between the two are they? Really I talked about it page? last year. I'm fascinated to see how it plays out this year. Like now that the specter, the over, you know, Aaron Rodgers is no longer oh, yeah. in town. You know what I mean? Like that changes yep. the whole dynamic. But There's does it change, doubt. like, how you're going to do, like, oh, I'm in a 3-4, and I like these kind of linebackers, and I like this kind of safety, and I like this kind of – you know what I mean? Does it really change no, that? And not. I feel like of that's course. the page no, he's not aspect, really no. connecting on, you know? You know, like, like especially taking guys in the draft, you know? You watch, like, Draft Day, and right. I know that Draft Day was a you. bullshit movie. But, like, you know, Kevin Costner's, like, <laughs> famously is telling the coach to fuck off, and he right. gets to play – you know, right. is it like is it more like that? So the question is – Or is like, it more is, like are you like that behind the coach, closed doors? You know? Right, yeah. right, right. I feel you. Well, like, yeah, that's a whole other podcast right there. Because no, I, I know, do I know, have I thought, but but I do. But have it goes thought. to. I I mean, somebody's. I, I'm surprised. Has PFF done a thing on taking special team and taking kickers and punters in the draft, and whether it's actually valuable or not? Wait, are you? Did am I having a stroke? Did you just ask for PFF's information? <laughs> like, well, what, that's the kind is, of information that happening? a bunch of data. What this is the thing. If what I'm gonna go with happening? data anal- if I'm gonna go with data analytics nerds, I'm gonna go to PFF. I mean shit. And like I feel you. only I feel you. like who else tries to value like Sumner I mean, Sports, guess, you gotta go with our boy Eric. That's if it. another team was gonna take them, I guess they're valuable. I don't know. I just don't buy it. I don't buy it. I feel I you, man. I feel you. The other thing, the other aspect of that I'm kind of fascinated know. with when it comes to special teams this year is Keyshawn Nixon had such an amazing, basically half season as a returner. So electrifying. But then you look at that Detroit game, winner go home, getting in the playoffs and Detroit did a phenomenal job of absolutely neutralizing Keyshawn Nixon. I'm really curious to see if teams kind of follow that blueprint. Cause they did a great job of like, corner kicking not getting into the end zone but making sure that they would have kind of basically having him surrounded in the corner in play and okay you you, you're not going to bust one you're not going to bust not only obviously not going to bust a huge touchdown run but you're not going to bust 
a good return, a big return on us. I, I'm like, look, you're going to need the kicker to do it. You're going to need a disciplined coverage unit. But man, I'm telling you that if you look at the blueprint as how do you slow Keyshawn Nixon down, that game, that game is it. And I'm uh, Rich Pisacci has got his work cut out for him to kind of figure out how to bust that open. You know, we shall see. We shall see. All right, Corey, you ready? You ready, buddy? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. This week in the Packer Blogosphere. That's right. It's this week in the Packer Blogosphere, the return of that venerable series. Um, traditionally, Corey, thank you. This is yes. a time where we look at things that have happened within the week, because that is what it's called this week in the Packard blogosphere. But before we yep. go any further, I want to give a shout out to a man in the comment section. Tom Grossi, you are a legend. Okay. Everything okay. you did in the month of June is absolutely amazing and uh, cannot give you anything but love and respect. And I hope I see you in Green Bay. I'm going to be there next week. Are you coming to camp? Let's go. Let's do it. Who's Tom Grossi? Just kidding. Uh, he's a dude. He's Bold a dude who likes the dude. Packers. Uh, he's a good dude. Um, does he like the Packers, though? Okay. Let's 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 let's, let's 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 talk about this for go. a second. Okay. I saw. Okay, I saw this guy amazingly raise. I believe he got almost to half a million dollars. Right? It was crazy. I yep. may have gotten over. Yep. So I'm an that. idiot if I. Yep. But anyway. I, don't know, I got close. a little bone to pick. Right there. Yeah. He's still, you know, yeah, I kind of feel pick. like during this whole thing, he went over to the dark side as a fan, though. I'm going to be honest with you. He had a <laughs> lot of jerseys on. He had a lot of cheerleaders from other teams and, and presidents right, right. and owners right. just kind of like seducing him and teasing him and being <laughs> like, Tom, come to our side. Come and to like, the dark you know, side. He's doing right, dances. Right. Like, I don't think it's like, bro, like. You know, I have some respect. Is he a Packer fan? Yes, of course he is. I don't know. We're going to have to find out. We're going to have to find out during training camp. Actually, you know what? You know, you know what I'm excited about with Tom Grossi for training camp is the return of Tom Grossi. Although this time we've got to get it on camera. Oh, my God. I think you were there when I pulled the lemon drop uh, South American hot peppers. I've recently found out they're fifteen to 30,000 Scoville. And I literally – I pulled it out of the garden, and Tom's like, oh, yeah, I can eat peppers. And, like, he had no idea, bro. He ate the entire pepper and, like – and he was – he actually – I could not believe – I could not believe this guy eating this pepper. And, like, the look on his face, it was, like, so genius. For, like, 20 minutes, he <laughs> could not believe how hot it was. But he was, you know, like, all – there were a lot of people around. And he was trying to, like – he saved face, like, so well. It was, like – it was just so funny when people eat a hot pepper. And, and you know, I watch hot ones and stuff, and it's just so funny. <laughs> but, yeah, I have uh, I have some lemon drops for you there, Tom. I'm ready. I got some, and they're they're perfect. Well, apparently, right he'll now, be so. in he'll be in town mid August. So yep, be ready. Yep, be I ready. ready. Um, uh, actually, I did want to give a shout out to a Hall of Famer, a Hall of Fame. I not, not I'm sorry. Did you say? Are you asking Packers Hall of Fame? No, Pro Football Hall of Famer, who is also now a member of the board of the Green Bay Packers. That's right. It's Leroy Butler. Look at this guy. I love this guy. I love coming to thank all fans and shareholders, Packers, to say how much we love and respect our fans worldwide. Truly America's team, in my opinion. Go Pack Go. I mean, where else? Where else does this happen? Where a dude not only like plays and becomes a legend and invents the Lambo Leap or whatever, all of that, but then is like held out of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, even though he should have been in long ago, and then finally gets in. And how does he celebrate? By becoming a member of the board of the team. I love this. I love Leroy. I'm so happy for him. He just seems so happy. His podcast, by the way, make sure you check it out. Him and Gary Ellerson, they do great stuff. Shout out to Leroy Butler. Just awesome. Just awesome. I just love it. I just love it. That's just me. 
I was trying to look over his shoulder to see who was over there. I thought it was Matt Schneidman. There was somebody over his shoulder. Yeah, I love I love me some Lori somebody. Butler. Who, what's not to love? It is it's yeah. it's an amazing story, and not? he's uh, he's an amazing anchor here in Wisconsin. Um, hundred percent, hundred percent. Speaking um, of the Hall of up, Fame, by oh, the way, wait, oh boy. Cecil what's Isbell that? and James Lofton are still in the mix, right? Well, James Lofton's already a Hall of Famer, but Sterling Sharp. Oh, like, sorry, Sterling it. Sharp. Sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> the 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 eighties, James Lofton. Um, <laughs> yeah. The the nineties, exactly. James Lofton. Um, the right. uh, yeah, but see, so they're both in the mix. Isbell right? and and Sharp are still in the mix. I look. I I gave up kind of like holding my breath a long time ago, right? Like there are so many. I talked about this a little bit on daily. There are so many great worthy candidates in the senior kind of bracket right so like every one of those dudes should be in in my estimation like there's no doubt like not just the pack former packers but all of them they're all amazing players who played at such an insanely high level to even be in consideration so i'm not like you know like i said holding my breath but isabel i think is probably uh, look much to wes hotquist's uh um chagrin I, I would be surprised if he ever gets in. However, Sterling still got a chance, know. and I'm obviously pulling for him, no doubt. Of all the old Packers, I feel like Isbell has the best chance, honestly, of all of them because of the forward well, pass and how I think the forward pass. The forward pass and his numbers. And the fact his that he wasn't quarterback and his the years. numbers as a quarterback yeah. are crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, next up, ladies and gentlemen, uh, so if anyone used to – watch carry the g with uh with aj dylan here on this youtube channel a couple years ago we used to do like a segment with tyler our social guy uh you know just basically going over what what you know aj was doing online every week and while i would love to get tyler on here every week for this segment specifically for blogosphere unfortunately that just can't happen scheduling wise but we will be ladies and gentlemen featuring a tyler TikTok here during blogosphere every single week he is oh, yeah. killing it killing it on the cheesehead tv tiktok including this one right here roll it if you thought the days of having an mvp and champion quarterback in green bay wisconsin were all but over until jordan love wins one of course you couldn't be more wrong all right the green bay packers just signed alex mcgoo the USFL MVP and champion, all right? This guy is an absolute gamer. Definitely going to be a fun camp story to watch. 67.4 completion percentage, 2,100 yards. He broke records with over 20 touchdowns, QBR of 108.3. He rushed for 403 yards and five touchdowns on just 70 carries. And, of course, like I said, he's an MVP and a champion in the USFL. Look. Nothing more than a camp arm, probably. Not going to dethrone Air Jordan, right? The heir apparent at this point. But it definitely will be fun to watch. Again, he's an absolute gamer. Just check out his highlights. It'll be a fun camp story for sure. Every week, baby. Let's do it. I mean, I'm sad. I like it. What's hilarious is that there was a comment in that, like, to that video about, like, oh, he's going to, like, dethrone Jordan Love. And Tyler made a response and blah, blah, blah. It's so good. Tyler does yeoman's work, not only with our social media, but on that specific platform. Every week, Tyler's TikTok. Looking forward to it. I can't wait. Uh, and the, one other thing, Corey, if you'll allow me, yeah. I cannot wait for, is the launch of a brand new weekly podcast here at Cheesehead TV. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, starting when I return from camp, it's Carry the G in MKE. Camille Davis and I, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna rip it up people i'm telling you this woman carries the g you may know her from the technical podcast you may know her from her appearances every week on lockdown bucks but she absolutely carries the g i've been watching her kind of content now for the last like yeah, about a year or so she knows her packers she knows her stuff we're going to be talking each and every week here on cheesehead tv i can't wait Carry the G in MKE. She's our Milwaukee correspondent, if you will, here at Cheesehead TV. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Awesome. Corey, I know you'll be listening every week. Oh, you're, yeah. You're, you're already a big fan. <laughs> no. I, uh, yeah, I am. I'm a big fan of Cheesehead TV. You, you, you better be. Uh, finally, speaking of Cheesehead TV, 
The Cheesehead TV store is off the hook, people. It's off the chain. Holy cow, Brent has dropped all sorts of great stuff, including this great new shirt, QB1. That's what he is, people. It's not an exaggeration. That's who he is. He's QB1. But that's not the only thing. We got plenty more, all sorts of stuff. Look at these designs, all this new stuff in the Cheesehead TV store. I'm telling you, that jacket, that rain jacket, that's I'm all about that life. I, I need that. But so much great new merch in the Cheesehead TV store. Uh, you can find it here on YouTube, a link to it on the video down below, uh, links down below. You can find it on cheeseheadtv.com on the homepage. There's a button shop. You can find it there. So much new great stuff ready, getting ready for the season. Uh, I can't wait. I'm wearing, I'm wearing my All You Need Is Love t-shirt. That's available in the store. Do it, people. Get on it. Corey, I know you're going to be uh, spending I mean, I way have, too much money. I have a Gary the G on. shirt on right now. There you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. It's looking good. Looking good. I did not right, drink let's all hear these from beers the, just now. Let's, let's, let's you know. No, I, I did. No, but let's Maybe hear from the folks on YouTube, shall we? We got. Oh, yeah, YouTube. YouTube. YouTube, YouTube comments. You. Let me go to that. Let me go to the queue. Yeah. All right. We got Ryan Willie. Ryan Willie. What does Corey think about Carlson replacing Crosby? I mean, look, Crosby was ready to go out the door. I don't know why we kept Crosby as long as we did. We only did it got a loyalty. He kind of was slipping. I know everybody's going to say he wasn't, but he was. Uh, (laughs) So, yeah, I I feel good about it. I don't feel good about it being a draft pick. Uh, Luke Carnes, welcome back. Carry the G and go pack go. Thank you, Luke. Haven't seen Luke on uh, what's up, Luke? In a while, by the way. What, where's he? I back? know he 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 did mention that on Twitter yesterday, or I'm sorry, X, uh, that he has been MIA as of late. But I think I get it. Like it's the off season, right? Until tomorrow, so I get why people have not been coming every single week. But you know, hey, those happy hours, they're off the hook. They're a lot of fun. Yeah. I hope everyone starts jumping back on board starting uh, tomorrow night. Overshadow Sean. Thanks for Super Chat. Football. What? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy to think that we're back here. It's just crazy. You, you talk so about happy. it, you talk about it, you talk about it, and then it gets here. It's really nice. Actually, yesterday I was really excited about it. Um, I didn't think I would be, and then it always happens like Today, this. Today, not so takes... much. Yesterday, very excited. No, I'm 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 as excited. It's just yesterday there's crowds, you know, and that's really what it is. If you were here, Nagler, you would understand. Let's just say that. Um, Correct. Correct. You know, there's crowds. It's like today. It's just like press stuff. It's stuff. It's stuff inside the building. But right. like when there's stuff yep. outside that like p- human beings are showing up for, like practice tomorrow, it'll have that vibe. It's going, baby. Then we it's have going. Uh, tr- train fan forever Miller true Packer fans would always hit the like button. Hey, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate you. Thanks Thinking- for the super chat. Thank you. Hit the like button, people. Do it. Uh, yeah. Then we got he Soder, Barry Sanders. Oh, God. Barry Sanders averaged five point yards per carry for his career. The guy that they give three attempts and a half across multiple games is averaging 5.1. So he's talking about uh, running backs. The but yeah, but lack but of Soder, use of Aaron Jones. Soder. Soder, they have to give the person the ball in order for them to do anything. Uh, thank you for the super chat, though. Uh, do it. Also, every quarterback that you liked growing up sucked. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Englewood, 77. Thanks for the super chat. Salute to Banky for standing up to AR-12 last year. Last year, not just last year. All his shit all the time. But uh, you know what? I hope the Bears do really awesome. Oh, Barry, sorry. Hello. I thought he played for the Bears. I hope the Jets. What? I hope the Jets do amazing because I want those draft picks. Uh, I want those draft. Don't we? What do we no, get? No, 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 sir. You want what them do to do poorly. You want them to do the poorly. Jets. Yes. The worse Why? they do, the better the we... draft picks. Oh, I thought no. it's the better he does. No, he just has to play, right? He has to play you want 85% the of his snaps. You, 60, no, it's like 60, 65%, something like that. That's so what's that? Threat. So all he has to do is play how many games then? Like six games, seven games, eight games? No, that's yeah. 50. A little bit more than that. But 9.5 yeah, no. games. So higher, I want them I the want him to play 9.5 the games. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I want them to suck then. 
I love how the poop emoji shows up on this chat, by the way. I'm kind of not moving on to the next it. thing because I, I like that. I like how that happens. I really like it. <laughs> um, wait, I got to add. Hold on. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, all right, let me go back to this. All right, here we go. Kevin McConville, thanks for Super Chat. Banky, you, missed you, man. Kevin? Can we get a Bukowski rant? I saw that nerd talk trash about <laughs> Pulp Fiction on Twitter this summer. Long off season. Yeah, well, I know things about Peter Bukowski. I know things. Oh, no. Oh, no. I know things. Oh, no. I know things. Don't say that. I, I study him for a living. I know him better than anybody else. That's all oh. I'm going to say to that. Um... No, I just I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, I, he hasn't annoyed me. You know who is an, you know who annoyed me already is um is what's his name who's walking with Domovsky and Matt Schneidman and Wes, who's like, are you sure about what did he do with MVS? Oh, He's Mark Daniels. The UW, yeah, Mark Daniels, and then like hey, and hey, then like come on Domovsky was like and Wes, whatever. I know, bro. I saw that. Whatever. You only get. You know, Nagler, you only get so many tries before it's like, really, bro? Really? Like, come on. What are you doing? <laughs> what are we doing here? I feel you. What are we doing here? Why why are we why are we putting up with this? Um <laughs> I have a low 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 tolerance. I don't know what it is. Uh but it's low. It's very low. Hey, uh Justin, speaking of, thanks for the super chat, Justin. Who in the media will Banky start beef with this year? Hmm, that's a very good question. Uh, we're all waiting. Okay, Justin, we're all waiting to find this out. But some of us, more than others, because some of us will have to deal with whoever it is. Not really anymore, because I pretty much deal with it more. Because I live here now, most people come at me directly now. It's really funny. Mm-hmm. It's rare that you have to put up with anything. Uh-huh. It, okay. It's uh, Also, everybody knows my antics now, so it's hard. it's hard for people to get annoyed by me unless they're new. You know? That is true. That is true. I literally had some of the Packers. You said when the Packers got awarded the NFL draft uh, and you you instantly shit on their video resolution. I had someone with the Packers text me. He's like, is it bad? We're here. And it looks good on our end. I'm like, it's just Banky being Banky. Like, you just, you just got to move past it. Like, just keep going. You're doing fine. You're doing great, sweetie. What what did I I don't I don't remember I don't even remember doing that Yeah you were oh, like because oh, it was the, the press conference it looks like shit Yeah yeah the press conference Well it did it did God it did mm-hmm. Um I feel you Where where was I Oh yeah who am I gonna start beef with this year Let's I don't see. know who can I who can I do Maybe you know what at the at the reporters at the reporters get together What are we calling that Yes We need to have the secret media we need gathering to have a code I call it in, we need to in my code, in my invite to people I call it the media gathering because not everyone name, there is a reporter. You know, there's people from IR, there's people from the beat. Media camp. Media camp. <laughs> media camp. Media <laughs> training camp. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Like so when we go there, I'm going to take a poll of all the media people and find out who would like me to up their engagement exponentially. And then we'll see. That'll work. You know? That'll work. And it means if they ask for it, it's even better, right? He's Soder. <laughs> Thanks, Super Chat. I love the Packers. The way they treat me here is second to none. Someone who is no longer Campbell in town said, might just Campbell's, be clueless. Campbell said. That's an important huh? part that you missed. Oh, Campbell. Campbell. Who's De- Campbell? Devondre Campbell. Devondre oh, Campbell. Oh, Devondre said. Campbell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Devondre Campbell said, I quote, I love the Packers. The way they treat me here is second to none. Someone who is no longer with in town might just be clueless. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Very interesting. Where the hell is BJ Raji? Where is he? That's a great I question. Just, I just saw that in the chat. And I was like, like, where is he? Like, That's like so BJ Raji. I was like, there's no like, way we're gonna touch that, but it's old it's school. Like, but I love seriously, it. Seriously, like, like where is it. he? He's like, he's like the greatest Packer player of the last 15 years. That is fucking dropped off the face of the earth where is the guy i didn't ask ryan wood ryan wood had the scoop back in the day i have no idea what did he do with it i don't know <sighs> mike b should wes hod replace Corey? yes yes no yes. no yes wes hod yes. ain't gonna ain't gonna start beef with anybody wes hod ain't gonna get out here and be like 
that guy or that dude needs to go or whatever. Like, no. Wes Hot ain't going to get out here and just make up stats the way Corey does. Like, no. 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 The entertainment value. He's in Chipotle, as much New as Jersey, I love you, Wes. I love you, Wes. But, yeah, no, that ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. Uh, then we got Tom Grassi. Packer transplants is back. The world is healing. You know this used Love to be you, Tom. this used to be Tom. This used to be Tom's favorite show. I'm I'm just gonna say that. I don't know if it is anymore, but there was a time, a long time ago, a long time ago. <laughs> uh, then we got uh, Big B, and I had to put this okay because Big, Big B Vern Big B, B is here. Who is how old? Seventeen. Uh, around there, yeah. Okay, let's Vern just say Llewellyn seventeen. He's not eighteen yet. He's right. As soon as he's He's right. He's right. He's correct. Okay, but here's the thing, Packer fans. A 17-year-old knows more about the Packers than anybody watching this chat right now, okay? Um, including myself, almost. Okay, slow I down. taught him everything he knows. Uh, Mike, <laughs> thanks for the super chat. Malik Heath makes the 53 is my hot take. What do you think about that? Thanks Ooh, oh, bold call right there. Although I will say, Mike, you're following. I, I'm glad you're following instructions because Justice and I, when we had our talk a couple like weeks ago, we did say like, now's the time. You got to plant your flag right now because look, these dudes are about to get out on the field and you'll be like, oh, every time Malik Heath does something well, you can say, I called it. I said he was good. And then like, you know, when he doesn't do anything well, you can be like, well, I, I didn't say anything. I don't know what you're talking about. You got to, like, ride or die right now with your dude. Make your call. So, Mike, I love it. I love that you're calling it. I need to wait to see it with pads on. That's it. That's all my thing. I was like, you know, the pads come on. That's when you start to separate, right? Homeboy apparently had a great offseason. Got in the mix with the ones. I'm all for it. Like, I'm very excited for him. Uh, but you got to do it when the pads come on, and it's not just t-shirts and shorts. That's it. That's me. I feel like that's me. I feel like I could take Bukowski in a cage match. Okay, I don't. <laughs> is, am I just? Am I just? Am I just? Am I, say I just this all thinking? The time. Corey, Corey, we always like get this could. question. We get the question. Like we get I the could, question. Though. If you and Banky fought, who would win? We get this all the time throughout the years, then and I always say fight, though. you would. You no, we never would, but you would win because you would cheat. So that's why you would win in the cage match. I With feel anybody. like I could take Bukowski though. He's he's a little too worried about how his face looks, and I'm not. So, that's good. Um, that's good. you know, a hey, uh, Bucky Boyd. Thanks for the super chat. This is the year of repairing the triangle. Go back, go. I like the way you're thinking. I like hey, you're I like thinking. it. Repairing the triangle. That's really good. Re repair. That's, that's a awesome. new shirt. Repair the triangle. That's a good. That's a good shirt, right Jerry there. Sturzinger, thank you for the super chat. Any thought on having a carry the G player of the game and they get a six pack? That's a good. Good question. No thoughts. Oh, that. I that hadn't had question. that thought, but that's a great idea. Let's do it. I, although yeah. most, not most, but some of the players are not beer drinkers. Not beer drinkers. But I'm down with that. I do I'll like the idea of a though. carry the G player of the game. Yeah, we need to do that. Speaking of which, carry the G. Yeah, you didn't talk about that there in your script. We're, we're very close. I did, I did, Corey, but then I took it out because I was like, I, we're not quite like the dots are not like. We're about to make a major crossed, announcement. It's like going to be whatever. season two of Carry the G, and probably by next show we should have everything locked down. But it's coming out. We're, we're very out. close. We're very close. We're it's very about close. to be here. Dylan Bird, thanks for chat. Nagler in town for Saints game. Also, will y'all be meeting before games again this year? Before games again this year, I'll be trying to make fam love the pack instead of Saints help. Nice. <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah, um, we won't be doing the uh, you know pregame stuff with the rest center again this year. The Saints game, um, I'm just gonna say yes because we're live and I want to be there at the home opener. So there you go. Yeah, I'll be there. AJ Vincent, thanks for Super Chat. I've asked this to Nags this offseason. So, Corey, what's a successful season for the 2023 Packers in your mind? Great um, question, AJ. Well, here's the thing. The 2022 Green Bay Packers did not make the playoffs. So, for me, I feel like if we just make the playoffs this year, we have had a very successful season. Whatever we do in the playoffs is not a big deal. But I'm definitely, with the way the NFC North looks, with the way that our team looks and and – you know, a couple things have to gel for this team to be successful, and, and they're not out of reach by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you know, we, we 
if we have, you know, what well, we talked about, top top 15 defense, if the offense, right. you know, gets gelling, which there's no reason it shouldn't, again, uh, Jordan Love does not have to do a lot. He's he's literally got to be competent. He could be a C-plus student, and then this offense could take off, honestly, um, especially if, like we said, Matt leans on the running game. Um, so, yeah, I mean – you look at teams, you know, I wish I I wish I knew more about NFL teams, other NFL teams, but like you see these teams in the playoffs that are very balanced and they attack people on on multiple fronts. And imagine if the right. Green Bay Packers were that because we're not relying on a All superstar sudden, because there is no right. superstar to rely on. And that's I mean, very very exciting. Look, so the San I, I, making the playoffs is, wrote Brock is a thing. to the NFC Championship game. You know what I mean? Yep. Like like, or look, or I'm the Jacksonville Jaguars what's with happen? what's his name who yeah. sucked. That guy sucked. He was so freaking terrible. What year was that? He was the worst quarterback of like the entire league, and the Jacksonville Jaguars almost went to the AFC Championship game. Shit was crazy. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you mean Blake I Bortles can't. against the Blake against Bortles? The Blake Bortles. Yeah. He sucked, and he almost got. He now almost look. took them all the way. That shit was crazy. But now look, now look, now look. Like that's not a plan, right? The idea of like, oh, our quarterback only has to like not like fumble every time he takes the snap. Like that's not the plan. I get that. But to your point, Corey, I agree that Jordan has to be, uh, I'm not going to say just competent. He's got to be a little bit better than competent. He has to play well. Like, he doesn't have to be a superstar. That's the important point here. When you're looking at 2023, it's like, look, no, but whatever it, what development I, my point comes is, yeah. af, after this year is great, but it's like for this season, yeah, like he just to, has to, to make the playoffs play well and continue to, to make, play yeah. well, and they to, could be in yes. the playoffs. Race yeah, to make the playoffs, he could overall be a C plus quarterback. Like that's what I'm saying. Yep, that's what I'm saying. He could he could grade I, out I, as I, a C plus. I feel um, B minus would be better, but uh, all right, where are we at? Uh, da, 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 da. Doug hype TV. Let's Doug get to hype. Important... What's up, Doug? Thanks, Doug, for the super chat. Let's get to important matters. When new Banky cocktail and when can I try it? Okay, so. Uh, for the Minnesota game, I already have a purple lemon drop that's really good. It has this lavender uh, simple syrup that came from the garden. I actually had lavender that I dried out, and I make a simple syrup out of it. It's so freaking good. I cannot wait till Minnesota Vikings game is going to be off the chain, okay? I've already got, like, it's going to be crazy. I already have the local Brown County tickets that I won the lottery on. So I have four tickets to that that I'm not going to go to. I'm going to give to my friends more than likely. But then I got friends coming from all over. It is going, like, if we... We can just beat the Vikings at home this year. Honestly, that would just be oh, amazing. Yeah. But yeah, per look for looking forward to the purple lemon drop. Probably gonna bring LaFloradora back. Not sure what I'm gonna open the season with. I'm still working on that. But there are a lot of there's a lot of hype. It's probably gonna be a little bit it's gonna have to come from the garden to be honest with you. I have a new salsa right now that next year is every single ingredient in the salsa is coming directly from the garden. Like I've got That's it all so planned out. Awesome, this year's awesome. salsa, by the way, is like 90% uh, everything from the garden. So next year is going to be, yeah. So then we got Dustin Logan. Thanks, Super Chat. Corey, thank you for recommending Joe and Paige. They're killing my Shadow Lane remodel. Really appreciated the info. Go Pack Go. You're welcome, Joe. Dustin. I'm glad that's all working awesome, out for bro. you, Dustin. Dustin lives on. He's a new uh, homeowner on Shadow Lane. Shadow Lane. Um, Getting some reno, getting some reno done. Dylan Bird, thanks for super chat. Any chance to hang for the Saints game? Dylan really wants to hang on the Saints game, Nagler. So we're gonna have to let's go, Dylan. Let's game. do it. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Lot one is open again. Let's do it. Andre Bougie. I'm gonna say Bougie, but it might be Boogie. So sorry if I totally messed up your name. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Uh, do the Packers solve their season opening game swoons this year? Who? You know, the the know. thing they got working for them is that the Bears were so bad last year and the Packers have owned them for so long. And they're, yes, I think they're going to be improved. But week one's always a crapshoot, right? It's always weird. It's always kind of crazy outcomes, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't think whatever, regardless of who wins or loses, I don't think it's going to be some insane outcome, like some beat down. Uh, but I do think it'll be a toss-up. I hate to say it. It's like they got talent down there in Chicago. It's not like they're just like rolling out Sisters of the Poor. So, But I don't expect it'll be what it's been the last couple of years. And I did want to say something I was thinking about in 
Okay, I'm not even going to say where I was thinking about this, but where I do my thinking. Underage Packers are going to have to do a rebrand pretty soon, by the way. And I was thinking about this. What is Truly. going to be the new name? Truly. I literally For was going to ask Big B and Joey this. Like, I'm with what, you. What's the strategy here, boys? Like, are you going to hire some new underage hosts and then they're going <laughs> to keep the brand going? Like, what are we doing here? Right. What is the future? So at the at the end here, of underage what is Packers. the future? I know. What is the future right? for underage Packers? And what are we rebranding this? I'm very fascinated by this. I'm. This is to me. This is the uh, post camp uh, question uh, for the season because we're getting close. Sure. I love it. I love it. Okay. That's it's all I got. So That's all we got. Thank you. Is that it? For Super Is that chat. it? Really appreciate everybody showing up. It's awesome. I love it. I love it. Uh, speaking of people showing up, tomorrow night is our weekly happy hour uh, for Patreon members. Patreon members are the lifeblood of Cheesehead TV. We really cannot begin to express how much we appreciate each and every one of you. Um, if you are a Patreon member, remember, if you subscribe to the podcast, if you're listening to this later on, and you're on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever, uh, you don't need to listen to the ads. Just become a Cheesehead TV Patreon member. Or if you are, all of the podcasts that we do at Cheesehead TV are available on Patreon sans ads. So we thank you exponentially for your support. Thank you so much. And by the way, all that stuff we were talking about earlier about all the new gear in the Cheesehead TV store, you get 10% off if you're a Cheesehead TV Patreon supporter. Thank you so much for the support. Speaking of support, shout out to everyone here on YouTube who is a Carry the G Club member. You guys absolutely dominate game days here during our watch parties. Watch parties will indeed be back this season. Thank you so much for the support. Corey, you got anything else, buddy? Matt Mamba, they are currently searching for the Fountain of Youth. Please be patient. Fair point. Fair point. A uh, drinking age Packers. I mean, that's that's an easy rebrand. That's an easier rebrand than X, than fucking Twitter to X. Underage Packers to drinking age Packers. I love it. Genius. Sorry, I didn't think of that. I literally thought about that for 45 minutes today. <laughs> I spent a lot. I spent a lot of time. I spent a lot of time thinking about where would they go? I saw Big what B's tweet, do? and I was just like, "What are they gonna do when they not the <laughs> underage Packers anymore?" <laughs> I don't know. I love that you're so me. concerned. What's funny I is really that you am. probably think more about you thought more about that than you're gonna think about like the Cheesehead TV meeting we have on our calendars for tomorrow afternoon. So no, I I'm look not. forward no, to I think about that all, all the time. The only, the only problem is the only pro the only problem is is when you move that you compete with the farmers market and we got tours going on, like, you know, it's I just think, hard. But I no, I, I live I for that. I love the the happy hour is great. And honestly, you the diehard fans that are on in the off season, like he Soder is one of them, okay? Soder is probably like Soder, on every I, I, has Soder man. ever missed a Patreon happy hour? <laughs> like, has he ever missed one? Oh, I don't think so. I don't think and so. Jeff not Jeff's always call. on. Like, there's so many. Like Chuck. Like, like there's like there's an incredible amount of people that um form this community. And uh, shout out to you guys. I know I give Soder a ton of shit, and he takes it. And you know he keeps he he's still here. So uh you know can't <laughs> wait till he sees me and kicks my ass. He's right a down. gentleman. Overshadow Sean. Thank you so much for the late super chat. Go pack go for life, brother. You're talking my language. I love it. Uh, that'll do it for this episode of Packer Transplants. We'd like to thank everyone who makes Cheesehead TV part of their daily Packers routine. We are and will always be devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. I think it's a fluid situation. And we're, we're I know you guys love it, especially Nagler. I can see you smirking at me right there. Uh, we're going to take it one day at a time. And, uh, <laughs> and just, it's going to be fluid, though. That's all I can tell you.